Father, we want to thank you, God, for this time. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we want to thank you, God, that you are doing a great thing tonight. And Lord, you are going to speak to us in a very special way, God. And Lord, I believe, God, that you are going to take complete control of what is going to happen now. And Lord, I pray that people will be receptive to your voice, to your will, and we will stay obedient, God, and we will do whatever you ask us to do, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17, okay, sorry, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Now this is a verse which we all know by heart, this is a verse which I learned when I was in the junior section in VBS, okay, many, many, many years ago. When I was in junior section, I, I very categorically remember uh, it was um, uh, memory verse, first day memory verse, I think, 2 Corinthians 5.17. So that put me to thinking, that's the reason it is important to send our children to Sunday school VBS, so that God's word, you never know when it will speak. So when I was at a junior level, in, in VBS, I learned this verse. Let me read it to you from the Amplified Version and then let me share what God wants to talk to each one of us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now, this was a very small verse and uh, I read the verse. I participated in the competition and I don't remember whether did I do well or no, but I remember learning it for a competition. Now, while I was meditating through the week, while I was meditating, and to preach for this 30-40 minutes, I have to meditate for 6-7 to seven days. Because this is the main service and uh, I want to share what's on my heart and when I spend time with God, He tells me what to speak. Okay? So, in the last 9-10 to 10 years, we don't repeat much of messages, we don't repeat much of same subjects, but God has been gracious in giving us beautiful revelations. How many of you are blessed with these revelations in the last nine years? Come on, lift up your hands. I am personally blessed. I have recordings and uh, I was listening to a few messages from six years ago. And I was so surprised to know that six years ago, God has revealed so many good things to us. And still he's been revealing continuously, continuously, continuously. Now, let's look into this verse and if you have your notepad and pen, pull it up. It's very important. It shows seriousness and if you're not paying attention or doing something else while the word is happening, I would really appreciate and request you to give utmost respect, reverence to the word and voice of God. Alright. The verse reads like this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ. Now, we need to understand anyone. We need to understand anyone. It is not only for pastors. It is not only for teachers, it is not only for Sunday school teachers or it is not only for a set of people who have a high bank balance or a low bank balance or a set of people who belong to this elite class of the society. It says, therefore, if anyone. Now, we are all trying to lead a life like Jesus. And when we are talking to people, when we are ministering to people and when we are dealing with people, we deal with anyone and everyone and we should not be biased. Amen. We should not be biased. Now here the word of God says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, I'm reading it from my Amplified Version. There are some very powerful words used here as meanings and as thought processes. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior. Now let's look at it. It's saying, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, that means he is grafted into Christ. Are we learning together? How many of you will understand grafting? How many of you will understand crafting? If you're into cultivation and if you're into kitchen gardening and other things like that, so you will you will know what grafting is all about. Now, here it says grafting is nothing but one piece of the stem and the other piece of the stem are joined together for union. Everybody say joined together for union. So the moment it at the point of intersection when they are joined together in union, after a few days, they grow together. Are we learning together? The two stems grow together and it gives rises to a new product. It gives rises to a new product. So grafting is, is very beautiful and it, it brings so much of new stuff into our kitchens and into our homes and for us to enjoy, eat and enjoy. 
Now here in this verse it says, therefore if anyone is Christ, he is grafted into him joining Christ. Now we have to look at this verse in two contexts. One is the old context and the other one is the new context. In the old context, we were a different person before knowing Christ. Okay. Now there is another set in this old context. It says, you know Christ, but you don't accept Christ. Are we learning together? You know Christ. See, there is a lot of difference between knowing and doing. Last week I was explaining the difference between knowing and doing. Now, you know, I know how to make biryani. But I cannot do the biryani because I have never practiced it. In the same way, you know that Jesus can answer and solve all your problems. But if you don't spend time in prayer, nothing is going to happen. Are we learning together? But with his grace and mercy, he has protected you. He has guided you. He has provided for you because you call him loving heavenly father. Now when we are calling him loving heavenly father... And he is taking care of us. As an obedient child, it is important for us to go to the next level. Amen? How many of you believe that it is important for all of us to get into the next level? Now here, when you and me have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and you and me have made a decision that we are going to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. We need to remind ourselves. We need to remind ourselves. Brother, 20 years ago, I told my salvation prayer, brother. Brother, 30 years ago, I did my salvation prayer and from there I am being a very good Christian. But why the Holy Spirit is reminding you and me today, whoever is listening to the sound of my voice, on the day of salvation, you made a decision that you have decided to follow Jesus and there will be no turning back. Amen? There will be no turning back. Now when you are grafted into the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are grafted and joined in Him as your Savior, what happens is you are connected to God and the only connection which keeps the connection going is prayer. Amen? Prayer is a time where you communicate to God, where you speak to God and our God is a living God, He speaks back to you. Amen. Now when you look at the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal, what happened? When the prophets of Baal put, on, put all the required stuff on the altar and they were crying, they were cutting themselves, the Baal didn't come and burn the offering. But when Elijah put the offering uh, on the altar and he also put so much of water and when he prayed to the God of heavens, our God showed up by fire. The fire was so powerful that it even burned the wood which was in water and also the stone. Can I hear an amen? When our God shows up, it is entirely different. When our God shows up, it is entirely different. So you need to be very careful when you are grafted into that kind of a God. Can I hear an amen? One kind of a God. The one and only all-powerful, almighty, omnipotent, omnipresent God. Now here the word of God is reminding, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is grafted into Christ. Why are you grafted into Christ? You and me are grafted into Christ because you and me can stay connected to Christ and you and me have to change. You and me have to change. Now grafting changes the whole product. In the same way, when you are called to do something great, you cannot do it by yourself. But when you and me have to get grafted into the presence of God, into the body of Christ, then only we can give something great. When only we can get into our calling, then only we will be able to do what God wants us to do through our life. Now when you and me are grafted and when we are growing, we need to understand that our old nature has gone. Now here the word of God is saying, therefore if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, new things have come, old things have passed away. Now today we are going to meditate upon what is God wanting us to let go. I want to explain to this, I'm laying a platform right now. And we need to let go of few things in order to let in the new things. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking about a message with the title, Let Go to Let In. Let Go to Let In. We need to let go. We need to release. If you release what is in your hands, then you are going to get something new into your hands. Now here, new creation. When you come in connection with the Holy Spirit, you are convicted by the Holy Spirit and then you are convinced and then you decide in your mind and you want to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. There are few aspects in our life which will change, which has to change. If it doesn't change, then we are not a new creation. We are still an old creation. Are we learning together? Now, when I was working for my previous organization, the identity card color was different. 
the organization logo was different my salary was different my location was different my seat was different my position was different but when i left that organization and came into a new organization what happened was my culture changed the way i have to dress had to change my location changed my designation changed my position changed everything changed and when i look 5 years 6 years back about my old organization i hardly remember what happened in that organization all i remember is few good memories and my farewell cake <laughs> and i gave that 10 50 i i gave 7 8 years to that organization and i literally forgot everything in the same way when you and me are into christ the first thing is our appearance has to change our appearance has to change our god is a god of love our god is a god of dignity our god is a god of respect the way we appear in front of people are we dignified are we dignified is our appearance pleasant is our appearance neat that matters the most nowadays what is happening is everything is changing with this evolving culture in the 21st century now christians are the most confused people at the moment on the face of the earth you know why because they are confused whether they should follow the word of god or they should follow the world and the god of this worlds now when i say god of this worlds if somebody is playing very good cricket he is called god of cricket if somebody is doing something really wet at a very higher level they are called gods of doing that somebody is playing guitar they say they are all gods of guitars okay superlative now christians as christians as a child of god initially i was also confused then when i prayed and i asked the holy spirit the holy spirit gave me a beautiful liner quotation okay a quotation and if you want to make notes and write it down please go ahead and write it down it says this is what the holy spirit told me and it goes like this when you follow the flow the anointing will not flow are we learning together many people say we have to follow the flow many people will say we have to follow the crowd okay if you follow the crowd then you will miss following the cloud which the israelites followed in the night and in the day when they were going through the wilderness as a child of god you and me have to understand from the bible how and what we should follow the world should not dictate terms to us neither we should look up to people because people will fail everybody has sinned and fell short of the glory of god are we learning together how many of you are excited to listen to this now we want to idolize somebody and if you start idolizing somebody and start following them that means you are not following the bible you are making everything spiritual lawrence here how can it be spiritual take a deep breath take a deep breath what you are breathing is spiritual it is written in our bible that he breathed his breath into the nostrils of adam can i hear an amen the same breath you and me are breathing today and we need to keep things spiritual if you want to keep things social then it is different but if you want to keep things spiritual now many people ask questions why should we keep all things spiritual because it is written in joshua 1:8 meditate upon the word of god day and night if we don't meditate upon the word of god day and night then we cannot be a new creation we cannot be a new creation now whenever we are training our children and when they are growing up okay when i was growing up or in for any one of us in our culture when we are growing up the moment they see elders we ask them to wish them right we ask them to wish them so the moment somebody comes to our house we ask them to give a glass of water and we teach our children so many times to wish elders moral signs cut your nails groom yourself we teach them so much that as they grow up it becomes natural as a part of their life and they just do it naturally are we learning together after eating food we just naturally go and wash hands in our sink why it goes naturally because it has been trained for years and years and years in the same way in the spiritual context also when we are meditating upon the word of god day in and day out and day in and day out and day in and day out the biblical principles the biblical culture becomes your lifestyle and your culture can i hear an amen now as we heard what vinita was speaking she was talking about david was worshiping god instead of complaining 
David was worshipping God when he lost a baby. David was worshipping God when he prayed for seven days and prayer didn't get answered. Now I know of many people who prayed to God when their prayer was not answered. They thought our God is a dummy God and they left our God. And people keep asking where is God? You know where is God? He's everywhere. You know he's everywhere. When you pray to God and your prayer is not answered and still you're worshipping God, that reveals that your love and respect towards God is unconditional. If you have a conditional love for God, then when things are working in your way, you will praise and worship. When things are not working in your way, you will not worship God. Are we learning together? Now, when our God is a God who has agape love and who loves us unconditionally, the question to you and me is, when we trust in a God like that, when we believe in a God like that, when we expect blessings from a God like that, in response, should our love be unconditional to God? Are we learning together? It has to be unconditional. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Our appearance has to change. Our behavior has to change. Appearance has to change. Our behavior has to change. And the best part is, our thoughts have to change. Our thoughts have to change. What kind of thoughts should we have? Before following Christ, our thoughts were different. It was worldly. But after following Christ, if you are in Christ and grafted into Christ, your thoughts should be godly thoughts. Your thoughts should be godly thoughts. The word of God says in the book of Psalms, Delight yourself in the law of the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Now when I was growing up, my desires were different. If you ask my desires right now, the desires are different. As we age gracefully, as we, gra as, as we age in the presence of God, we need to understand that when you go more closer to God, God's desires become your desires. Hence, this is called godly desires. Can I hear an amen? Now, Mother Teresa was a beautiful human being who was taking care of all the downtrodden people in the city and streets of Calcutta. How many of you know about Mother Teresa? She was taking care of all the people in the city of Calcutta. She was running a destitute home and she was clothing the naked. She was feeding the poor and she was taking care of all the people till their last breath. When you get close to God, your desires become godly desires. Are we learning together? God will talk to you. God will talk to you. If you are close friends with an intelligent person, your thoughts also will start to become intelligent. How many of you all have experienced that? If you are close to a very rich person or a good businessman, and when you spend time with them, they will teach you how to do business. Are we learning together? We want our children to spend time with the, with the, with the student or the friend who comes first in class so that that will rub off on our children. Are we learning together? We don't want our children to be around notorious kids because our children will become notorious. Are we learning together? How many of you will agree to this? We don't want our children to be around notorious friends. There is a saying in English, tell me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Now, if your thoughts are always spiritual, if your thoughts are meditating on the word of God, then your actions also will be spiritual. Can I hear an Amen? Sunday after Sunday, year after year, week after week, month after month, we are discussing from the Bible only spiritual matters. Amen? Spiritual matters. When the doctors say we cannot help any further, spiritual matters come into play. When there is no relative, no brother, no sister, no friend who is coming to your rescue, God becomes the main source. Are we learning together? Now, therefore, if any man is in Christ, our appearance will change. Our appearance has to change. Our behavior has to change. Our thoughts have to change. Our actions have to change. Our words have to change. Are we learning together? When I started off preaching, my English was not this great. My sentence construction was not this great. The usage of my words was not great. But time after time, week after week, practicing, preaching, preparing, today I am able to address big crowds. How? It is the grace of God and it is 
the deeds the words which i have decided to change the moment i said i have decided to follow jesus no turning back amen many people said now you are in night shift you cannot do ministry now you are married you cannot do ministry oh now you have your first child you cannot do ministry oh you have your second child you cannot do ministry now you are becoming old you cross 35 you cannot do ministry it will become tough it will become tough but if you are in christ you can do all things through christ who strengthens you can i hear an amen therefore if any man is in christ if you are in christ everything is possible all you have to do is surrender yourself to god surrender yourself to god now we need to understand that our habits also have to change the day when you received the lord jesus christ what kind of a person you were versus what kind of a person you are you were and you are today what kind of a person you are everybody say i have come a long way everybody say i have come a long way i have learned to trust god with all my heart with all my mind and with all my soul now when we are into christ there are so many things which have to change and i want to just repeat what the holy spirit spoke to me as a child of god when you have decided to become a new creation your old things have to leave that is when you follow the flow the anointing will not flow and when you follow the crowd you miss to follow the cloud so you need to understand whether you want to follow the cloud pillar of cloud or you want to follow the crowd and if you do what all the other people are doing the anointing will not flow we are so many bunch of christians right thousands and millions are everybody manifesting in the anointing no why because if everybody is following the flow the anointing will not flow but when you follow jesus in prayer and when you praise and worship his name then only the anointing will flow can i hear an amen many christians are losing their faith and going back into no god concept one god concept why because they are trying to follow the crowd they are going to try to follow with the flow but they are not going with the word of god today i am here to encourage you sunday after sunday i come here with a smile to encourage you wherever we go as a family to minister we encourage people to live a life which is pleasing in god's sight reminding people that you are in christ and you are a new creation behold old things have to be pass away now when you are when you are in their old creature there will be some moral standards old moral standards and spiritual condition now let's meditate upon this one particular word for couple of minutes called spiritual condition everybody say spiritual condition now what is your spiritual condition today as of today as of today what is your spiritual condition now we need to understand on a scale of 1 to 10 what is your spiritual condition now you might be praying every day you might be listening to messages every day you might be reading the bible every day but what is your spiritual condition how is your connection with the lord jesus christ when you pray how do you feel it matters the most when you pray how do you feel and when you walk into your prayer closet what is your condition when you come out of the prayer closet what is your condition how often do you go into your closet matters the most are we learning together for a person to win the olympics the other day i was looking at some beautiful autobiographies of people who have won lot of olympic medals they have not taken a single holiday for 3 years every 4 years olympics comes for 4 years people have not taken a single holiday and they have not had a cheat day on diet for 3 to 4 years hence they are able to achieve the gold medal as a child of god how many times you go into the closet or how many times you take a holiday from going into your prayer closet if you don't go under the into your prayer closet you will not be able to function under the unction of the holy spirit amen i'm emphasizing so much on prayer life because that is where a christian becomes from a normal christian you become a powerful christian there is lot of difference between normal christian and a powerful christian a normal christian will only pray but a powerful christian will pray and see results can i hear an amen are you ready to become that powerful christian we need to leave our old things we need to leave our old things now today i'm going to talk about and i'm i'm going to i'm going to introduce to a new topic 
it's called hidden habits everybody say hidden habits now we are somebody when we are alone there is a there is a quotation which says all the battles are won and lost when you are alone all the battles are won and lost when you are alone now we need to understand that when we are alone we have to be on our best we have to be on our best i'll narrate a story how many of you like to listen to a story now i'll narrate a story you want to listen to a story okay there was a king okay story time there was a king who had a son and that son was so notorious and he was doing everything and anything against the king's will so what did the king do is the king asked his commander in chief to take the prince and leave him in the forest because he is doing too much of damage and too much of irritation so the commander in chief took the prince in his teenage and left him in the forest and came off so what happened was for survival against all the odds in the forest the little prince learned how to attack the how to escape from the animals and then slowly from the forest he went to the nearby town and in the nearby town he was begging in front of a temple or a social place let's not call it a temple let's call it a social place he was begging outside the temple and whatever alms he got from people he used to eat that and save some and used to go and sleep now after many years the king wanted to see his son and he he asked in the kingdom to go and search for his son and then one day what happened was the king was at his palace and he was giving alms to the poor people suddenly he recognized this young man that he was his son and he was taking alms in front of the kingdom now the king slowly told to his secret friend or that secret person whoever it is the wise man saying that look this is my son whom we threw many many years ago out of the kingdom and he's begging now i want him back into the kingdom so when the soldiers went to try and catch that guy and bring into the kingdom this this little guy this prince thought that the king wanted to kill him and he ran away he forgot that it he was his father and he ran away from there after many months they found that guy and they told him if you pull him he is going to run away again so what they told him is there is a work in the palace if you do that work we will give you food so the major requirement of this guy was food so this guy accepted and went to the palace and as he was doing the job slowly they started to promote him slowly they started to promote him and that was the plan between the king and the wise men in the palace and then slowly they promoted him and they brought him to one minus king so one level lower to the king so this guy was sitting with the king this guy was eating with the king this guy was doing all the brilliant things with the king and slowly he reached his position after many years but he didn't know the truth that he was the prince of that kingdom at one point in time when the king was old the king told him the whole story when you were small you were notorious one day i was very angry i left you in the forest and this 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 what happened and today i am glad that you are restored and you are a part of this kingdom and once i die you are going to be the king everything was fine he was very happy to know that he has been reunited but when this prince was sleeping in the night everybody pay attention now when he was sleeping in the palace after eating the dinner he used to slowly take out one small cover take some food and put it into that cover and sneak it into his pocket and then that prince used to take that small packet of food put it under his pillow and sleep when everybody was sleeping when the lights were off he used to open that cover take that food and eat and again he used to go to sleep the king observed this behavior that this guy is putting some food in the cover and putting it under his pillow he is the prince he is the next king whatever he ask is just in his lap within a second it is in his lap but why is this guy doing like this then he asked the wise man and very disturbedly he said why is this guy doing like this then the wise man said when you were supposed to train him in the kingdom he got trained in the forest he got trained among the beggars that's the reason it is built so deep into his heart that every night it is his hidden habit that he has to put some food that insecurity has built over the years and then the king said i didn't train him in the kingdom i agree now what is the solution then the wise man said we need to work with the prince and then they slowly started to tell him in the night when you are hungry you just have to clap two times like this and the food will come on the plate 
after many many months of training and just telling him in his ear before he could sleep the wise men used to come and tell you are the prince and in the middle of the night when you are hungry you just have to clap twice and the food will be in your lap after many 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 months the day he got up in the middle of the night he just clapped two times and the food came and the king passed away and this prince became the king now the moral of the story is if we don't train our children in the biblical manner they will get trained in the world if you are in christ you have to get trained under the unction of the holy spirit through the principles of the bible if you and me are not getting trained through the principles of our bible but we are getting trained by people who talk into our ear through the phone or through our friends or relatives or whoever it is we will start behaving like them not like god are we learning together we call him abba father what do we call him we call him abba father and we are trying to live like jesus if you want to live like jesus you need to read the bible what jesus did when he was on the earth and you need to ask the holy spirit what to do but if we are listening to somebody else in the middle of the night we will hide food in the packet and put it under our pillow even though the whole kingdom is ours are we learning together are we learning together now this is what i wanted to convey If you are in Christ you should be a new creation. Earlier we used to talk bad about others. Now we should start talking good about others. Are we learning together? Earlier we were we had prayerless lives but now we should have prayerful lives. If you are complaining a lot you need to stop complaining and start giving thanksgiving for what you have in your hand. If you have grudge against somebody you need to have the gratitude that you are set free of your sins. we need to understand that if you are fearful about something you need to ask god to give you courage this is the difference between a old man and a new man old man and a new man are we learning together when you have accepted the lord jesus christ nothing changes physically but spiritually things change in your mind and for the spiritual to show through your natural it takes time it takes time as in the story i narrated the wise men used to speak into the ear of the prince day in and day out in the same way when you read your bible and when you listen to your own voice day in and day out your fears will become courageous days can i hear an amen your fears will turn into faith but if you're listening to more of fears and less of faith you will live a life full of fear false evidence appearing real it is false but it appears real because you have spoke it so many times you have heard it so many times but in the same way if you start speaking the word of god you start hearing the word of god then you will speak faith and the word of god says that i am the good shepherd i have come to give you life life in abundance if today you and me are not living an abundant life it is because we have not spoke abundance into our life we are still looking at the little packet and the little rice under our pillow where in the whole kitchen is ours the kingdom is ours not only the kitchen the kingdom is ours sometimes when we have everything also our actions tell us who we are are we learning together we have everything but our actions tell actions speak louder than words especially after coming to ministry i learned many things about actions there are so many people who convince me saying that yes we are there with you we will be there with you but with their actions when they are not there it is very clear and obvious there are people who has promised me one to one saying that you have prayed for us god has done a great and mighty thing we will not leave this ministry they are not here for few years now they are somewhere else i'm not saying that they should only stick to me if they are doing somewhere else great i am fine but when we do something we need to communicate it very very clear are we learning together are we learning together we need to understand if you and me are in christ we are a new creation new things should happen new manifestation should happen new habit should come new appearance should come new behavior should come new thought should come new action should come new deed should come new word should come out of your mouth new gestures should come new gestures should come out of your body there are so many non verbal communications there are so many non verbal communication as a preacher i'll tell you what is a non verbal communication when i am preaching and somebody is yawning it is a communication saying that that person is sleepy and my subject is not great either my subject is not great or that person has not slept all night because he was playing video game or seeing some tv serial all nights non verbal gestures 
are we learning together there is another strong non verbal gesture when we are preaching people are playing on the phone that means they are not interested in listening but they are interested to sit there because they are interested in doing something else non verbal gestures when you and me are in christ our non verbal gestures also have to be good are we learning together there are few people who in prayer they are closing their eyes we say amen and still they are closing their eyes what does that mean they are not paying attention to what's happening in the room we have to live in the present we have to live in the present today i want to encourage each one of us that we need to stay humble in the presence of god read our bible and pray every day and ask the lord what god wants to talk to us and we need to ask god what he wants to do through us amen are you ready to be that new creation with that new features now with one example i want to close how many of you will have a cell phone just wave your hand most of you i think have joined with your cell phones when your old cell phone your old cell phone was there it had very less features but when you got the new cell phone it had new features and it created more excitement and it made a bigger hole in your pocket <laughs> i remember initially when we bought our first mobile phone it was somewhere around 2000 or 3000 rupees nowadays cell phones are trending at 2 lakh rupees 1 lakh rupees Why are those cell phones so costly because of the features new things because of the new things in the same way as a christian when you accepted the lord jesus christ your actions your gestures your thoughts your habits your non verbal communication your deeds would have been different but as you are meditating upon the word of god day in and day out and taking guidance from the holy spirit and improving yourself people should start seeing new features in you people should start seeing new manifestations in you people will start seeing all the good things what god is doing in your life and they will say i want those good things in my life can i hear an amen i want those good things in my life rather than saying no i don't want to live a life like that person but rather when you are living a blessed life in christ people will say i want a life like that and then you tell them the secret of my energy is jesus christ and lead them to christ or reconnect them to christ amen let's close our eyes bow down our heads and pray father we want to thank you god for this time We bless your holy name for who you are. Thank you Lord for talking to us through 1 Corinthians 2 Corinthians 5:17. Lord help us to develop new appearances, new behavior, new thoughts, new actions, new words, new deeds, new gestures, new areas of interest. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would help us to heal our hidden wounds, hidden habits so that we can purify ourselves. and live a life which is pleasing in your sight god we want to thank you and bless your name god in jesus name i pray amen amen